Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Dorothea here, coming at you with another recipe video. I'm surprising even myself with how much I enjoy making these because considering how much I don't like to cook, I think it's because I'm combining this passion that I obviously have for making, producing, editing videos. Combining that with something I'm not passionate about, like cooking, kind of forces me to get passionate about it because I want to think about like, oh, what am I going to make? What am I going to share with you guys? I want it to be quality content. It's more than anything just to inspire you to get in the kitchen, especially if you're like me and you don't like to cook. Today I'm going to share with you something that I did last week for the first time and I shocked myself. But it's reminiscent of a soup that I had almost every single day in Colombia. For that reason I'm calling it not mommy's soup because mommy is the grandma of the household where I was staying, Mauricio's grandma. In Colombia it's very common, as was the case in Mauricio's family, that everyone lives really close together, if not under the same roof. Everyone is always entering and exiting the house freely. It's very communal, it's very family-based. For that reason, mommy always, always, always had something cooking because people get hungry and everyone wants to eat. And so this soup is super, super, super easy. I saw her make it a million times, but I never actually sat down with her and got the recipe because I don't even think there is a recipe. I think she just wings it as well. Plus, she really intimidated me, if I'm being really honest. Like, talking to mommy always was scary to me. Colombian grandmas are just scary people. I had a hankering for the soup last week and I just threw a bunch of stuff in the pot and prayed that it would work and it totally mimicked the same thing. So I'm going to share it with you today. It's obviously not the same. I don't have the same touch, the magic touch of grandma, but it's really good and it's so easy and it's not like the chicken noodle soup, which I know a lot of Americans are used to. That's like the ultimate American get well soon recipe is chicken noodle soup. It doesn't have noodles in it because Colombians are not big on pasta. I feel like South Americans Latinos in general, you could say, not a lot of their dishes have pasta. They have more rice, they have platano, they have yuca, they have potatoes, but not pasta. So this is not a chicken noodle soup, this is a chicken potato yuca platano soup. But I'm not going to use platano because I never really liked it in my soups. Sorry, mommy. I always found it so incredibly ironic that this soup was so popular there because in Cartagena especially, it is hot as hell. I complain about the heat here in Rio. I really shouldn't because it's nothing in comparison to where I was in Cartagena. It really doesn't compare. Every single day in Colombia was like 45 plus. And I just thought, why in the world are these people eating hot soup? Literally sweating bullets down their face as they're trying to like blow on their soup to cool it down. They would always joke that it's the hangover cure, which I will agree it does cure a hangover. Probably because you're sweating so much, you just have to like get all of that out of your system. Hangover or not, I think you should try this recipe. Come with me, check it out. Hey guys, it's a few days later. I realized I couldn't cook that soup the same day that I filmed that first part of the video because I didn't have yuca. And for me, this is a key ingredient to this soup. So I went out, got some yuca. I also have here an onion and two potatoes that I'm gonna cut up and add to the soup. I've already thawed out my chicken, which was in the freezer. I am using drumsticks for no other reason than I like drumsticks. It's my favorite part of the chicken, so. Yeah. In Portuguese, drumsticks is coxas, so coxas de frango, that's what I'm cooking. They are starting to heat up in the water and I'm going to go ahead and get to cutting these veggies. Ideally, I would also have garlic because garlic is good in everything. <laughs> it's weird, I'm losing my mind. I swear I bought some garlic the other day at the store, but I can't find it for the life of me. I'm sure it'll pop up as soon as I'm done making the soup. I'm going to put in some other spices, I'll show you what I'm doing, but first things first, got to cut up these veggies, throw them in the water. This is my secret ingredient. It's it's not a secret, it's yuca. You can see it's white on the inside and dirty and brown on the out. It is a root vegetable. I think you can find this in the US. I don't know because I've never looked for it when I was there because I didn't know it existed. But here in Latin America, it is so popular. They fry it, they cook it, they put it in soups, they put it in dishes, it's a side dish, it's a main dish, it's everything. And it's so good. In Portuguese, it's called aipim. I've also heard it referred to as mandioca. Fun fact, this middle part, which is the part that you eat, it can actually be processed into like a flour, and that is tapioca. I'm a big fan of tapioca as well. It's a big food item here in Brazil. They eat it all the time. It's really filling, it's really creamy, it's different from potatoes. If you decide to make this, I strongly encourage that you seek out your Mexican market. If they don't have it at your local grocer, get this vegetable because it will really make a difference.
And that, my friends, was the most labor intensive part of this entire recipe. Got these pieces, and then I'm just gonna cut it in half. They're bigger than bite size, but it'll cook really nicely. The next part are these potatoes. They have really thin skins, so I'm not gonna peel them. Big chunks. That's how I like it, and that's how it's served. Makes my life easier. <laughs> Lastly, we've got the onion. Really quick, so I don't cry. Ah! Do you guys know me? I just eyeball everything. I don't really measure things out, which maybe is not the most helpful for you as a viewer, but I encourage you to do the same because I feel like it really helps you get a feel as the person in control. How much of what is good, how much of what tastes good. Oh, it needs a little bit of salt. Oh, it needs a little bit of sweetness. Oh, it needs a little bit of whatever. I feel like that's an acquired skill that you just get by being in the kitchen. I have no, by no means mastered that skill, but I've just want to encourage you guys to do that as I do it because little by little you are learning. I have here a spice I'm going to put all of this in. It is called Tempero Ana Maria, which I don't expect you guys to be able to get in the US or outside of Brazil. If you are in Brazil, you can find it at Casa Pedro. But I'm just going to read off the ingredients so you can get something similar in the US. It has granulated cebola, onion, granulated Aglio, which is garlic, so there's my garlic. Yellow pepper, tomato flakes, uh, oregano, broth of galinha, which is chicken, which is perfect because that's the soup we're making. Got some extra virgin olive oil, just gonna eyeball it. I'll also add some salt and just let this baby sit, do its thing. I'm coming for you, I haven't forgotten. Mommy's just gotta cook. I'm just gonna film this close to him so he knows that I am present. Another spice that you can get, definitely, definitely get in the US is this baby right here, adobo. This is a Puerto Rican spice. It's everywhere. You can get it at Walmart. I had a friend bring this for me from the US because you cannot get it in Brazil. Dice aquí la combinación perfecta de ajo, orégano y especias. Es todo lo que necesita para que sus carnes, pollos y pescados queden so sabrosos. Sabrosos, gente. Agítelo sobre sus carnes antes de cocinar y listo. Basically what that says is it has garlic, oregano and a bunch of other seasonings. The simple shake is all it takes. Even if you're not making this soup, you should totally get this and tell me what you think because it's delicious. Max just fell asleep. I'm gonna close the door. I'm gonna turn off the heat now on the soup. It's been cooking for 30, 35 minutes total on pretty medium to high heat because my burners don't, they don't know low. <laughs> There's no such thing as low in this kitchen. You can tell that the chicken's done just by looking at it because I've made this before. Boiling chicken is so easy. It's my favorite way to cook chicken because it's just so weak. So, 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 so easy. All right, I'm about to chow down. I've added a splash of pimenta because you guys know I like it hot. A squeeze of lemon, which is what we would always do in Colombia. I don't know, it just adds a little bit of something, something. So try the lemon trick. Here's what it looks like. Got some nice big chunks of potato and yuca. The part that I like the most about this is that the meat part, the chicken, is just no fuss. Like you just put in the koshas, gifrango. You don't need to cut it, you don't need to mess with it, you just let it do its thing. And when you eat the soup, it's kind of a half of like a finger ordeal, half of a spoon ordeal. Obviously right now it's really hot, so I'm gonna be sipping on the broth. Towards the end, I'll be picking at the chicken with my hands. Huh. Really, really, really good. This next bite, this is of yucca and some onion. Oh my god. Mm. It's so good. You guys, if you make this soup, let me know. Send me a photo or send me, you know, write me a comment or something. But please, 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 if you do end up trying this soup, please use yucca because it will make the difference. That is one ingredient that I feel like you just can't pass up on. Follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff. And I'll see you next time. Ciao. Beijos.